No, no, not too many. <laughs> That's Homer's trombone. What, what, what make is this? Is it's this a con, I think. Con, yeah. And uh, he had the uh, rainbow. Every cloud will wear a rainbow was his favorite song. So we oh. had, had his rainbow inscribed on the oh, that's on clever. The bell there. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any recordings of him playing? We do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. They're yeah, out there just funny. on YouTube. You can just oh. you can just go to YouTube and say Homer Rudy Heber. Oh really? And they'll you'll get recordings oh, wow. of him both playing and singing. Okay. Yep. That's neat. And of course, because of that song, then he had rainbows everywhere. Yeah, he's sure trying. He had them on his china. He's got the <laughs> rainbow room down here. He had the rainbow. What was the name of the song? Yeah. Every cloud will wear a rainbow if your heart keeps right. The name of the song, I think, is "If Your Heart Keeps Right," but it's that phrase, "Every cloud will wear a rainbow," Every cloud that caused him to pick it up and use it. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Yeah. So rainbows was <laughs> everywhere. Rainbows were his thing. <laughs> Here are some cartoons of the athletic uh, preaching of Billy Sunday. Oh, yeah, he was. He used his arms a lot, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's funny. <laughs> Call him a man of action. Yes. He couldn't talk without his arms. Will Rogers is the... In fact, here's the article that he wrote about. He says, you can hear a holy trombone at Winona, and this article is about Homer Rodeaver. And in this, he mentions the slide on the house, and this is the article that caused the slide to be taken down, because so many tourists came to see it. Oh. oh. <laughs> so Will Rogers wrote that article. Yeah, Will Rogers was the author of it. Yeah, in the old days, you had to pay to get in. There was a, an admission fee. This fence was all the way around the town. Even if you lived here, you had to. You could buy a pass, a year's pass. But that was one of the ways in which the Christian Assembly raised revenue was by charging entrance into Winona Lake. Interesting. And then they also uh, built a power plant and sold electrical power to Warsaw. And they also built a north-south railroad called an interurban, which went from Goshen on the north to Peru on the south. Oh, that's a long one. Yeah, stopped about every 10 minutes or so, and people used it for their grocery shopping and short trips. Oh. Yeah, he built this railroad? Mm-hmm. The project. Yeah, a lot of the money came from uh, John Studebaker up in South Bend. Hmm. He was one of the early backers of the, they called it the Winona Interurban Railroad. In fact, here, here are some pictures of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the Winona Flyer, uh -huh. transportation between Goshen and Indianapolis. What well, if it went through Silver Lake? There's a railroad goes through there. Oh, I don't know. Well, it's it's directly south of us. Uh huh. It might well have. Oh, here's. Let's oh. see, if, see if we can tell. Well, it doesn't look like it looks like it. It looks like this one at least. What am I seeing here? This one apparently went over to the west a little bit, because this would be 15 and Silver Lake would be on on 15. Mm hmm. So it looks like this one went across, but I'm not sure that's the same as the... Uh, that may have been expensive. Yeah, it doesn't say where it stopped. Hmm. Near Tippecanoe Valley High School. Was that one that didn't make it quite all the way? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> collision. Akron, Indiana. That's on the way down, but well, it's off to the. Hmm. What a project that would have been. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could buy stock in the railroad then, eh? Mm -hmm. yep. That's how they raise money for it. Part one of the ways. What did they haul? Uh, produce and things like no, that? No, no, no. It was all passenger. All passenger trains. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was another, the, the other big railroads that came east and west hauled produce and, and commercial. Uh, and they, they double tracked it, so there was one track for the passenger and one track for the commercial. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. So you're saying the quality of the. Tremendous project. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Here's the cyclorama. This was the building that. How's the round, the round paintings? There were 15,000 square feet of paintings 
of battles of the Civil War because most of the veterans from the Civil War from this area fought in those three battles, Chickamauga, Missionary Ridge, and Lookout Mountain. And so the paintings were of those battles with paper mache figures in front of them. Mm. And that was a popular attraction until about 1920. They tore that building down in order to build the Billy Sunday Tabernacle. Oh. So it stood on the site where Same. the tabernacle later was. So, yeah. And this is a sport called roke, which is an early version of, a, uh, of croquet. It has a shorter mallet and uh, it actually has, uh, you can't see it well here, but it, it caroms off the sides of an octagonal uh, playing field. And uh, they still play rope today. There's a, a chapter over in Fort Wayne of rope players. Hmm. I had one of their uh, members come over and explain to me the difference between that and croquet. <laughs> they still use wickets and all that sort of thing. It's very similar. Uh -huh. What is this? A group here? Is this a musical group? Yeah, this is an orchestra. H.W. Owens, the critically acclaimed director of the Winona Conservatory of Music, 1907. There was a building called Strain Hall. It's actually here. It stood up on 7th and uh, King's Highway, and that was the local conservatory of music. There were eight schools here altogether. Uh, one was an agriculture and technical institute. There's a, a women's school, a girls' school, a teacher preparation school, normal school. And the Conservatory of Music stood up on 7th and King's Highway, but the building burned down in 1909. And so it no longer, and that was the end of the Conservatory of Music mm -hmm. of that particular school. Mm -hmm. But then later, the Rotaheaver School of Music you know, was very big. It's, uh, it's very flammable. And, uh, These pennants and, and photographs are from the schools that were here in those first 20 years of the 1900s. All of them had disappeared by 1920. <laughs> they, they degenerate, and uh, that is a problem. This is. Who did that come from? This came from. 